Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP video. In this one we're going to talk about the major update that happened just a couple of weeks ago uh, as of the date of this recording to JASP. We folks we have seen a massive massive update upgrade changes to this this wonderful free and open source app. It's amazing what we are seeing probably from the support that you see from these folks down here. Oh so good. All of these amazing folks participating in helping Jazz become the thing that it, it, it needs to be, which is free, friendly, and flexible. What are we talking about? Well, just on July 28th, 2025, Jasp went from 0 0.19 to 0 0.95, a massive jump. And, and so in this video, I'm just going to highlight some of the changes and point you to the release notes page. If you want to learn more, everything that they did now has a link to the GitHub or the forum where they uh, get uh, bug reports, where they get feature requests, all that kind of stuff. Let's pull up that and then we can take a few things for a spin in this video, but expect future videos to highlight some of the more um, impactful changes should get their own videos on my channel. So let's take a look at what we're talking about here. So here are the release notes. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. So like I said, just a couple of weeks since they dropped these updates, right? End of July. And I'm recording this on August 11th, 2025. So a couple of weeks have passed. So first things first, new modules and analyses. They now have integrated the ESCII module from a group that runs the new statistics. I should have opened that in a new tab. Let's do that. So this is introduction to the new statistics. Okay. Introduction to the new statistics blog. Here they are. It's Jeff Cumming and Robert Kalen Yagman, Yagman, hopefully I got that right, which is the estimation statistics with confidence intervals. So a lot of changes to statistical theory have occurred in the last several years. And one of those is estimation through confidence intervals instead of, for example, using P values, right? So this website has the book, right? It's from Rutledge is what it looks like. Um, and they have a lot of blogs, as you can see here. And they also have teaching tools for ESCII. Now, uh, I've previous, I previously have a video of ESCII, the ESCII package in um, Jamovi, right? You can do that. You can also use um, their webs. And I'm assuming that they're going to add in. They also have a package for the R. I'm assuming they're going to add in Jasp here as well. Okay. So that is a new module that you can add. Um, and modules go up at the top here. Um, some of them aren't active unless you have a... Oh, adding the side scroll is amazing. Unless you have, oh, here it is. So it's the only new module. The rest are analyses. So if I add that there, let's see. Can you click on it without having, I may have missed it. Probably missed it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you need um, to have data open. So I don't have data open just yet. So we'll have a, we'll have a look at that in a future video um, to sort of complement my ESCII. Uh, and that's how I that's how I pronounce it because I like doing it. I know CI makes us sound in English, but you know what? I like the hard C, ESCII. It makes it uh, easy to say ESCI, right? So we'll look at this beta to complement my Jamovi video on it. So let's take a look at some of the other new analyses. There is now a meta analytic structural equation model. Okay, so I'm assuming that if we go, uh, it's probably in factor again. I don't have any data. You know, let's open some data. Let's just open some data library data, shall we? Uh, debug data set. <laughs> Are we good GUI a debug data set? Um, yeah, let's just open up some descriptive data. Um, yeah, let's open up sleep. Oh, let's go back into here. Okay, so there's that. Let's go into factor. Okay, so it's only so it's it's the SEM module. Uh regression, mixed models. Is it in meta analysis? Yep, there it is. Meta analytic SEM. So I don't do uh, meta-analysis nor structural equation modeling. So I probably won't do a video on this, but you can pause it here to see what they're looking for. It is definitely a heavily R-based, right, with putting in the model here. You're going to want to type in using Levon style uh, syntax. Um, you, It looks like you can use um, your basic, you know, draw and uh, SEM is not going to be created here. But these are all of the options that you have for doing a meta-analysis um, SEM in there. And then, like I said, there is the... Uh, Bayesian meta-analysis as well right here, right? You can use that if you'd like, SEM-based meta-analysis. Um, okay, plot builder, the plot builder. Let's see where that is, the plot builder. Okay, so the plot builder is found under descriptives, okay? And it's in beta, right? So a lot of things that they've just added or, you know, they want users to test it, so user beta. So the plot builder has a ton of extra features and you can see I have it to show in my preferences the R code just in case I wanted to put this in R but this would not show if you don't have that okay so if we scroll down here this is there's definitely going to be a video based on the plot builder you can see all of the things that we can edit within a plot okay so we can put extra on the, the y-axis oh boy that's a lot and then we can go into individual data plots and fi figure out here we can make it a histogram if we wanted to there you go there's a histogram 
and you could you literally these are all of the options these are how this is what all of the options look like in our code here okay so instead of having to learn how to do all of this in coding which you know to some people is a bit too much maybe a bit overwhelming looking all at all of this is a bit overwhelming but all of this turns into this tiny little plot down here look at that right so we can change that if we want to um individual data points require a um y variable but if we wanted to we could split by group here we go there they are group one group two that's all this data really has okay um but this would be x and y axis variables since we don't have that we're not going to use that one but we can make distributions we can do count and sum this one looks like it requires x and y axis so expect a video on this because or maybe multiple videos because this is a fairly robust module here in uh in jasp and so there is a lot to do there's a little bit of uh uh, gooey things going on right here but then you can change the layout if you want to oh so many different options there's going to be a just and the tooltip shows you exactly what each of these things do so good okay so the plot layout combine multiple plots in custom grids okay so this would only be if you had multiple plots arrange plots by column arrange plots by row right and we can make these bigger if we want to okay we can still edit the image all of, we can still do all of the editing things that we previously would edit right so we could still do that edit the image yeah we can change what that says what count says etc right we can still do that and make those changes uh, and make these graphs look exactly how we wanted them to how we want them to because there's obviously an uh, y axis or a, yeah an x-axis issue going on here so plot that's plot builder that's the new plot builder module let's go continue the parametric survival analysis so this is a new survival analysis that you can grab uh, it's one of the modules uh perhaps there it is parametric right here sweet two new analyses in the audit module uh to determine the fairness of algorithms i don't really know what that means but um let's what is that the audit module so is this in um yep so you go into audit two different ones to evaluate maybe it's data audit. oh no algorithm auditing fairness workflow and evaluation lovely bayesian meta regression and three level meta analysis in bayesian meta analyses i just showed you that if we go into um bayesian meta uh, yeah so if we go into sem which was over here oh no meta analysis my, my bad right here you can do that you can you can still use the deprecated meta analysis model they added this new one and then the mental hansel i hope i'm pronouncing that right and peto meta analysis so if we go back into meta analysis there they are look at that lovely and then a bunch of new features and improvements to just the engine itself right small big and small not as big as new modules or analyses but good nevertheless adding the serbian language this is great importing r files that are r data or rds this is an important one especially if you're doing uh changes to the r code like this one as you can see version 0.95 i have there okay uh manually add and remove levels for example to uh Likert scales if levels are missing um, so these were issues so these were, were issues or bugs or sort of a feature request i suppose um yeah pr right uh that allow you to make those changes indicate with gradient where there is more gui to scroll okay so if we scroll down here indicate with gradient there it is there's the gradient okay just so you know that you have more to go and then it will disappear once i'm at the bottom yeah like that that's pretty good uh let's see bar plots of a single categorical variable with many ratio variables with different colors but same color per category not sure what i what that means you could probably look at eh, if you're a fan of bar, cart, bar charts uh filter and compute column bigger capture zones easier point and click behavior okay lovely a feature request for valen john's baines factor so i just noticed that up here no let's learn Bayes. uh baines factor it might be in there factor functions it might be in here or it might be in bane one of the two there's a lot of bayesian stuff in this uh, that i don't know about so there you go feature request show variable info when hovering variables Oh, variable lists. Okay, let's let's look at a variable list, shall we? There we go. Okay, wonder what it'll wonder what it'll show. Let's close this. I'm not quite sure what that would show, but in case you in case you look at it, safe for loading of a, of a JAS file and um security mode, just in case you're not sure if it's a if it's a naughty file sandbox. This is a Windows only feature. It looks like make sure to clean up broken data sets after failed load. That's pretty good. Uh, monetary columns, thousand separators and locale sensitive number display. In case you're working with money and other um, forms of currency, compute columns as mean and more of other columns via drag and drop. That makes it a little bit easier for for those of us who like using drag and drop features. Um, there is now a crash report in case your Jasp crashes. Export option to regression and ANOVA analyses to save model residuals. That has been a feature in Jamovi and SPSS for a really long time, but now it is here and you can now export analyses um, and predictions to a data sheet, which is what I have here off to the side, right? So you can add those as columns, speed up the loading process of JASP, both on initial opening and then in the R engine by leveling, uh, lever leveling, leveraging um, fancier processors these days, right? Laptops and uh desktop computers now especially the one that i'm on right now which is an m4 chip let let multiple cores um process the data that's great 
Uh, descriptive statistics now follows the variable types as specified by the user and gives output on these scales, right? So if you have a scale variable or the one that is um, with a ruler, right, it will give you all the output. Ordinal will only give you min, max, quartiles, valid, and missing. And then nominal will give you valid and missing. So for group, it will only tell us how many values are missing. So these are going to be based in descriptives. So if we go in descriptive statistics and I put in extra and I put in uh, group, it's only it's not going to try to find it's not going to try to give me the mean of that group, right? Which, you know, if they were equal, it'd be 0.5, et cetera, right? And then if we added more statistics in here, we could, and they would only apply to, oops, why did I get rid of mean, right? So um, more than one mode exists for nominal and ordinal data. The first mode is reported, right? And so we can see that there is only one. Uh, there, there is more than one, but it could be their equal groups, right? So that is that that is going to be given when there's a, a case like that. Basic plots, and then I think I have a video of all of the customizable plots that you can do, right? All of that box plots, scatter plots, frequency, and heat maps. I have a video on that, so you can do. So that will be the case as well. Uh, meta analysis does subgroup analysis and analysis dependent effect size, and the QC module has response optimizer and increased flexibility of out of control signals. That sounds great. And then here are all the bug fixes, right? So computed columns weren't working with ODS file crashes. Uh, case sensitive files were missing on Flatpak, which is the Linux install. Uh, Windows was having trouble with large files. Jasp was showing empty pages when loading a specific file. Um, LaTeX and Notes was having an issue. Thousands separator, which is adding, the, which was the monetary edition here. Where was that? Somewhere around here. Oh, right here. Monetary columns. Yeah, I was scrolling for a while. Most of that was cut out. Uh, tweaks for math expression in Jasp Notes. Okay. Fix on importing a fix of series fixes. So if there was a, a, a data series that was fixed in Excel when importing Excel files. Um, Adding notes for figures was fixed. Over translation in Japanese environment. Adding computed columns with another ODS, uh, in, you know, ODS and JAS not playing nicely with each other. And then our command, make our commander window great again. Hmm, I wonder what that. There's a subtle nod to there. <laughs> so those are overall fixes. Okay, overall fixes, and then they have fixes for each of the main um, base level uh, Jamovi things. So separate frequencies and descriptives. Uh, well, Coxon tests are better now. Uh, DV names are consistent with other T tests. Anova custom contrasts. Um, old labels, yeah. So fixing how stuff looks, rain cloud plots look better with more than eight levels. Why are you doing an ANOVA with more than eight levels? That's what I want to know. Um, and then the BFM was incorrectly computed for model priors. That's a Bayesian, I think. Um, ANOVA test. EFA and PCA um had issues with ordinal and binary data. Those are fixed. Regression line gone after axis shortening. I don't think I encountered this one, but then I also don't mess with graphs in Jasp, although. I swear, Jasp and Jamovi are getting so much better with these kinds of things, right? Audit's better, distribution's better, JAGS is better, machine learning bug fix, meta analysis bug fix, quality control bug fix, reliability module bug fix. Um, this one is unidimensional reliability was not working and comes up with an error. You can see that there were a few issues associated with that one, two, and three issues about that one. Unidimensional, not the greatest to have as an issue, right? Am I, am I right about that? Right? And then SEM uh, feature was added, summary stats for Bayesian AB testing and moderated moderation index in the process module, which I think seemingly moves out of beta. Uh, am I right about that? They don't have a beta next to it for process. They did, but now they don't. Interesting. I like it. Maybe they fixed all the things they wanted to. Nice. But yeah, this is you would use process. Hey, uh, Hayes's process model if you wanted to do uh, classic um, or Bayesian. Um, moderation, mediation, moderated mediation, mediated moderation, moderated mediation, uh, moderated moderation, and mediated mediation. Love it. You can do all of those kinds of things. So those are the new changes in 0 0.95. 0 0.95 of Jazz. I can't wait to see what's next. Version one. Who? Maybe we'll see version one. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how version naming occurs. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they could have done 0 0.30. I have no idea why they went from 0.19 to 0.95. Somebody could tell me, or I could ask, you know, the Google uh, or the LLM of choice why the naming of version numbers occurs, numbering of version numbers occurs. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or or other feedback, please leave the please leave those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Expect some additional Jasp content in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye.